Sorry, we are uh, 10 minutes late or so, but I'll try to, to move up a bit faster. Uh, so, good morning, everyone, once again. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we will have, well, uh, an hour, hour and a half, actually, about the, 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 this keynote talk, and uh, we have actually only the talk from Huyak and Nicholas Frankel is right after us, and there will be lightning talks. So after that, uh, the coffee will be served together with some snacks and other things. So if you're already shaking, yes, the coffee will be there. Just wait uh, for an hour or so. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming in such large number. Uh, actually, once again, we have, well, almost the same number as the last year, so it looked like that around 300 people are interested in Javantura and, and Java and related technologies in general. Uh, so, actually, I will start with some introduction about the conference, and then I'll switch to many other topics, and I'll try to do that as fast as possible so that we can continue with our next keynote a bit after that. Uh, okay, yeah, you can come. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, before we start, some typical info. So, everything is at javantura.com. Uh, there is no application or anything fancy about it. It's just, just the regular website. Uh, and in the schedule, if you look at it on the smartphone, it's maybe better to look at it uh, in the landscape mode because then you can see actually everything that's wide out there because we have three holes. Uh, on, if you're uh, tweeting or whatever, doing something on social networks, please use Javantura v5 as the hash code. And, uh, well, actually the closing is expected to happen somewhere around 5 p.m. or a bit later. Uh, we will see how it all goes, but uh, no, we won't have uh, delays like the last year, so don't, don't worry about that part. Uh, we actually have uh, three holes. Uh, this is hole A, and after the break, over here they will put a wall. So this will become a whole B, okay? Uh, the whole C is on the, let me just, on the first floor, you go up, you see the three elevators left from the elevator just behind them. On the left is the whole C. And this is how it will be, well, basically from 11 uh, till the 5 p.m. Uh, in three holes in three tracks all the time. Uh, uh, there will be a post-conference survey, a questionnaire for you uh, on TinyCC Javantura V5, uh, but uh, we, you will all get email about it, so you don't have to do it today. Uh, you can slip over, uh, get some impressions about the whole thing, and then and then do it. Uh, and after party, well, there is no official after party, but if there is a lot of us uh, here till five, then I think we can make a, a drink up or a beer up or whatever the up is there, meet up of some kind uh, with a lot of drinks, of course. Uh, so, okay, that's the most general info, and I think we can start with, with a bit of his history. So this was uh, a bit of a sentimental journey for us. Uh, Huyak was founded in 2011, so, ooh, my God, a long time ago, I'm that old. Uh, we were first interested in meetups, or drink ups, whatever you call them, and we didn't actually dream about doing conferences like this one. We said, well, if there is 50 of us, we can do a drink up, but what if there is 100 of us? We cannot do a meetup anymore, like not a regular one. Uh, so after a while, we got some help, and we got some help from the big guy in the background, Daur. Daur, hey. Yeah, that's the guy there. Uh, well, I think I, Casablanca uh, quote can serve me in this part uh, because we actually got a lot of help from Hroke, which is like a bit older than us, uh, well, 20 years or so older than us. Uh, and we started our first conference in May 2011. Okay, this is Dvorac Mihanovic, Tuchel. Uh, kind of under construction. Actually, it was refreshed, rebuilt, whatever, how you call it, redesigned, uh, a day before we actually got our first conference there for 150 people. Uh, however, we did start on time and everything was okay, so some of you were there, weren't you? Hands up if you were in Tuha. Oh, I see a few guys there. Okay, okay, so we remember those old times. So, since that time, we actually uh, did our first Javantura, uh, well, two years later, uh, and it was in HGK uh, above the Lidl uh, there. Uh, well, there was already a lot of us there. Uh, it was a nice place, uh, but there were some kind of problems. I don't know if you were there, uh, 
we kind of have some problems with the neighbors there. Uh, never mind. Uh, so actually, we got uh, Javantura version 2 in November the same year. Oh, you wouldn't believe that part. We were really enthusiastic about it. Uh, same place, we got the Duke. Uh, they are the creation version of the Duke. And the team was actually, the, this is the presenting part up there. E then we skipped some somehow 2015, and we go to 2016. And we switched to Hotel Internacional. Uh, over there, we had some really nice stuff like uh, Lego uh, trains and robots and stuff. And I think I, I, I remember this guy uh, who is our next keynote also, Nicholas. You were there for the first time. Yeah, and he kind of liked it because as you can see he came back. Uh, in 2017, in February, uh, we were for the first time in this hotel, uh, but up there in the uh, a bit smaller halls. So this year we decided to go down in the large hall. So we have a ceremony here. Hi, hi, Duke. How are you? Ah, well, okay. Me too. I didn't sleep too much. Uh, okay, so we got a Duke last, uh, first time uh, last year uh, over here. And uh, actually, uh, Neon Bakic was also showing us uh, nice stuff there, some micro bits and some other stuff for the children. So there, there was a really nice note about it, well, related to, to something else than just programming for the adults, let's call it like that. Uh, so, and the team is practically the same uh, over here this year, so we, we are st still, uh, well, young and nice and shiny there, working on Javanturas every year. Uh, Okay, uh, also last year we had the sixth Java Crow number, Java Crow 17 in May 2017. And once again, here is Davor with me and the Duke in Rovin. Uh, we will also call you later to, to Java Crow 18, uh, but we'll come to that part a bit later. And I also showed you the, the nice ring, the Java ring, uh, well, inspired by Lord of the Rings, of course. Uh, yeah, there is a Java ring. I have it somewhere up there. I'll show it to you later if you want to, to see how it's working. Uh, so, okay, th that's the history. Uh, actually, we did a lot. Uh, those are the numbers, but for those who don't, do not want to read the numbers, of course, uh, this is our 17th conference. Uh, if someone told me 10 years ago that I'll do 17 conferences, I, I definitely would not believe that thing. Uh, and thank you, Hrog, for, for supporting us on at least half of those. Uh, and we are still growing, so as you can see the numbers now in the graph, which is a bit better, uh, it goes like this. This is the Javantura version 4, the last one, then Java Cross 17, and this is the Javantura version 5. I think we can, we can go over 300 people in, uh, at Java Cross 18 this year in Rovin in, in May. Uh, okay, so this is the story, but as they say, enough about us. Let's talk about Java. So what about Java there? Uh, well, first of all, some interesting facts that, well, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but never mind. Uh, it was invented... Well, as they say, almost by accident. Well, the guys there uh, actually tried to clean up the C++, it didn't work out, and they said, can we invent something new? And then they did it. Uh, so it was like first intended for interactive TV and some really nice remote handheld devices with touch screen, five feet screen, and other things that you can work on it. Uh, but it was ahead of time. So at this point in time, it didn't work out. But it became, a bit later, a general purpose language that we all know and well, some of us even love. Uh, it was called Oak in the beginning. And later we changed, they changed it to Java because of some copyright stuff. Of course, there is always someone who calls something Oak. You know, you wouldn't believe that part. Uh, and Java is not just another vague acronym, okay? It doesn't stand for everything. Uh, actually, uh, it's a coffee cup slang word uh, coming from uh, US, of course, but originally uh, it's uh, connected with the Indonesian island of Java with W in their uh, Javanese language, uh, as they call it. And this was the original logo. Didn't look nice, really. Okay, like, okay, 1990s, you know. Uh, okay, so what other stuff? Well, James Gosling uh, last year changed the job. Actually, the father of Java uh, is now in Amazon. He was in Google for a really short time, like six months or so, but it was for many years he was in liquid robotics after he, he finished with Sun Microsystems. Uh, also, one other guy from the original team, Joel Parlang, uh, who originally created the Duke, uh, he, he would later work on many nice cartoons like Shrek and Simpsons and Over the Hedge. You wouldn't believe that part, so it's kind of... We, we do tend to have fun uh, now and then, you know, like other stuff than just program and talk about serious stuff. Uh, you also will find in class files one number, Cafe Babe, or C-A-F-E, 
F-A-B-A-B-E, uh, which actually talks about the original uh, cafe where the team went there for, like for every coffee, and probably they got the inspiration for the Java name in that cafe, but you can try to find it with, uh, in binaries of class files if, if it's somewhere over there. Uh, okay, and finally, the last part, probably one of the, also the most popular languages these days, JavaScript, got its name uh, from Java, but actually it's, as you probably already know, there is nothing to have to do with Java, but at that point in time they thought like it was really nice promotional stuff to call something Java and then something, you know, and it, actually it worked, okay? So th this is the younger uh, brother who actually doesn't have too much things in common, well, not in general stuff, uh, with Java. Okay, so enough about that part. Uh, Sorry. Uh, what about the, the Duke there? Well, actually, uh, the original Duke uh, was created at that point in time in the early 90s uh, for this first handheld device. And a bit later in 2011, we thought and we thought and we thought, like Professor Balthazar, you know, what can we do about Croatia? And we actually we, we said, okay, but we take, took a look at our football team and said, we can just put a nice t shirt on him and make him a bit more. Uh, squarish, how you call that, <laughs> in, in the red and white, and this was the Croduke. And a bit later when we did the Javantura, we tried to make it an adventure duke, so we, we got inspiration from Indiana Jones. So this is our Crow Duke, the indie version. By the way, where is the hat? I think you left it in the room. We'll find it later. Okay. I think we have a bullwhip somewhere for you. Oh, yeah, okay, we'll do something about it. Uh, Still a bit clumsy, so take care if you're around him. You know, you'll never know what happens. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Duke. Uh, so, let's go back to Java. So, this is the temple of Java boom, not doom, of course. Uh, and still the number one platform in the world. Now it's IoT microservices, clouds, and everything about it. Uh, for 23 plus years with us. A few billion devices run it, actually, and we have around 10 million Java developers in the world. Of course, some of them do switch to other languages, but I, uh, this is like riding a bicycle. You never forget Java if you uh, develop once in Java. And some of them do have certificates, which uh, we also are important, and we try to help with those certification paths uh, in Huyak. Uh, but that's not the point. The point are probably now more than 50, around 60 different other Java virtual machine languages that we have and we work with them every day. Uh, and some of them you already know, but okay, I'll talk about it a bit later. So this is one from Stack Overfill, the ranking of the languages, and as you can see, uh, and Scala and Groovy and Clojure are really popular out there, okay? So we are not any more uh, Java developers, we are polyglot developers, as you, as you can call. Uh, Okay, and also the father of Java said at some point in time, it's not about the language, it's about the platform. There is a whole ecosystem there. You know, Java is like maybe, maybe uh, you know, the cake, but there is a, a, a but about it, a cream and maybe, maybe some cherry on top of it. So there is a lot of things going on out there. Uh, also, our next keynote, Nicholas Frankel, uh, wrote uh, a nice blog about rise and fall of JVM languages, so you can read it out if you uh, are online. Uh, okay, so... Is it really popular? Uh, this is so boring. I, I think I have these slides like for the 10th time or maybe 17th, who knows? So yes, of course, Java is the first uh, bit on the fall. Python is rising, but still the first. Okay, yes, Python is rising. So that's something that we should take into consideration if you're considering new programming languages. Uh, other thing is TOB index, once again, boring, sorry. Uh, Java is also the first. Uh, there was some bump up there. There was C was a bit above it, and now it's uh, the, below it again, but C on the right. I don't know, this goes like Bitcoin up and down. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but actually, Java is the first, so that's the important part uh, with 14, 15% or so. Okay, uh, what about our universities globally? Well, do they teach Java? Well, yes, they do, and a lot, really a lot. Uh, however, there was some controversy in the few years there. Uh, that in 2014, there was an article that Python is the most popular introductory uh, language in the U.S., uh, at least uh, when, you, when you start the, the most famous universities there. Uh, in 2016, someone said, okay, Stanford will actually take the introductory course in programming and switch Java to JavaScript. So there was another thing like, you know, and then 
everyone has a headline about it, like, you know, Java is dead, JavaScript is the new best thing there, or something like that, or Python, never mind. But it looks like in 2017, by many informal surveys, that Java is still the most popular programming, uh, introductory programming language on most of the universities out there. And in 2018, okay, I don't know, take a look around. I think Java and related technologies are pretty popular, although we will have other uh, programming languages also here uh, mentioned today in many of our lectures and sessions. Uh, current state of Java. So the question is not where are we? What about Java 9? Well, Java 9 is with us since September, so that's an old news. I didn't have time to present it because we didn't have a fall conference, but actually it's the old news now. So Java Enterprise Edition or Java 10 or what are we talking about? Uh, we did last year one small, relatively small uh, survey uh, at our Java Cross 17 conference. We'll try maybe to do the same this year, but we didn't have time to prepare it. So if you receive an email about the survey, that's what we are trying to do. And we had around 122 respondents. So actually not a lot, but it tells us something. Like half of this room actually gave us uh, some numbers there. Uh, so first of all, who were uh, the people who attended Java Cross 17 and answer our survey, well, different people, you know, like from one year of experience to, I don't know, 15 years of experience, everything was there. Of course, there was a bit of disbalance in the, uh, that part, gender, sorry, uh, yeah, that's typical, but once again, take a look around, unfortunately, that's the disbalance we are trying to somehow, uh, well, to, to put it in, in, in the new balance there. Uh, Okay, uh, education level, well, everything. Typically for Croatia, it's a lot of masters, uh, diplomat and engineer, as you call it. Uh, but we also have a lot of, uh, well, more bachelors than we had before. And, uh, well, many different titles that are there, mostly developers, junior developers, senior developers, and team leaders and software architects, okay? So, so actually, this is the population that answered the survey. Uh, company sizes were once again, kind of everything. And number of uh, developers in the company also was from one to more than 100. Okay, so we have small companies and large companies. Uh, what are they doing? Well, they told us that mostly they are doing web applications and backend. Okay, and then after it, there was a bit of front-end mobile apps and desktop applications. So that's like uh, the structure. I don't. I, I won't draw any conclusions out of it. This is just for your reference. The slides will be online, of course, a bit later. Uh, but just to let you know on that part, so actually uh, to know w what people around us are doing mostly. Uh, about uh, standard edition versions, what they are using, well, at that point in time, you know, it, it was May 2017, so, well, a bit long time. Uh, Java 9 was, you know, maybe some early adopters, well, a few guys there just tried it. Everyone was on Java 8 at that point in time. Uh, I would really like to see numbers after Java 9. Uh, and, well, actually, we are looking for, they were looking forward for, for uh, many, many different things in Java 9, like performance, modularity, and other stuff out there, diagnostics and garbage collection and stuff. Uh, they were also using other languages, so this is once again about polyglotism, and JavaScript mostly, Python, C++, C Sharp, they're groovy, so we have, we have other things there that we kind of uh, thought were interesting to us, so yeah, we probably know more than one language these days. Uh, Web frameworks, well, Spring, kind of Spring, and Spring Boot, and Spring, and JSF. Okay, and Vadim, okay, well, there, there was, I have to tell now, Vadim is like the fourth one uh, happening there, uh, Google Web Toolkit is a, a bit down, and then the rest of the, the gang there. Uh, okay, so what about app servers? Well, they told us they're using Tomcat. Okay, if they are not using Tomcat, they are using Web Serval, Flyer, Glassfish, or WebLogic. Basically, that's around some JBus and Jetty there also. Uh, so, and some of them are not using app servers at all. Uh, also, nice numbers about JavaScript frameworks, which is not Java, sorry, but we have to ask about those things. So Angular, Node, and React, in general. Those are the things that are happening out there, if they are using any kind of JavaScript frameworks. Uh, IDEs, well, Eclipse, IntelliJ, uh, IDEA, and NetBeans, typically. Uh, in the world, you'll now see a bit of difference. Maybe more people are using IDEA than Eclipse, but actually, it's always like uh, up there, and the admin uh, is third for, for, for many years now. So it's not that different in Croatia, to be honest about it. Uh, build tools, okay, we ask other things, like Maven, Gradle, Ant. Yes, there are still people using Ant. Uh, version control, Git, of course. Subversion, Mercurial, CVS, okay, okay, we, we have other stuff there. So, 
yeah, Git. Git is probably the winner there. Uh, profilers, okay, they are using Visual VM, Java Mission Control. We have a talk about it today. Uh, J Profiler, X Rebel, and NetBeans Profiler mostly. So those are the things that, but still Visual VM is the first one out there. Uh, App Performance Manager, APM tools. Uh, well, there are some, those are some new tools. Not everyone is using them, but mostly new Relic, App Dynamics, Dynatrace, and some others are there. But actually, th this is this is what they told us. Uh, and they are also using Docker a lot, okay? And if they are not using Docker, they are trying to substitute it actually with VMware, typically. Uh, but we also have today a nice talk and some uh, book signing for the Kubernetes. So uh, a friend from, from Slovenia is coming to talk about it, and you, you'll see uh, more about it later. Uh, are they using microservices? Mm, third. Uh, if they are using, uh, is it easier? Mm, yeah, mm, kind of, okay? Uh, something like that. If you know, do you intend to use microservices in the future? Well, yes. Hmm. Okay, mostly. Uh, these are the questions that we ask. And the final question that I wanted to show you was about agile uh, methodologies. And uh, over there, we actually, they said a lot of people are using something agile. Uh, but if not, they intend to use it uh, in the future. However, as you can see over there, this is mostly daily stand-ups, sprints, and Kanban boards. Okay. Some of them say that we have well-written specifications. We don't need Agile at all. Okay, great for you guys. If only I had a job like that. Um, okay, so the conclusion. Uh, in May 2016, uh, 2017, sorry, uh, people are using Java 8, not yet Java 9. They are waiting for Java 9, new EE version. They are trying other languages like Scala and Groovy. And they are mostly using Spring MVC, Spring Boot, Tomcat, Eclipse, Idea, Maven, Gradle, Jenkins, and Git. Okay, that's, that's like the final outcome, what, what they told us at the previous conference. And they are trying new stuff like microservices and other stuff. Okay, so after that, we got uh, a new slogan coming from Mark Reinhold moving Java forward faster. And he said, okay, we have to do something about it. This is not going well. You know, we have like, we are waiting for Java 9 and waiting and waiting and it doesn't happen and we are waiting and it's postponed and we are waiting. So what to do about it? Well, he said, okay, let's stop about it. We'll do a new feature release twice a year. Wow, every March, every September, next March. Uh, and then we'll do update releases quarterly, January, April, July, October. And Every three years, we'll actually talk about long-term support and uh, things will be supported for at least uh, that period of time. And this is like the big update there. So he said like every half a year we'll have a new Java. Hmm, okay, let's see what's there. Yes, we do have new Java every half a year. In March 2018, which is only a few months after September when we get Java 9, we have Java 10. Okay, now today it's in the release candidate phase and on the 20th of March, you'll have Java 10. So wow, is that the big wow there? Well, not that big as for Java 9 or Java 8, but still, okay, we have a new version there. So what's inside of it? A lot of gems, a lot. Uh, so I'll try to like go really quickly through all those things to see what's inside of Java 10 that will be out next month. First, you have local variable type inference, which means you don't have to write types anymore. Can you see this out here? Var list, var string. What, it, what is the type? It infers actually, in this case, array trees or streams or whatever. It works with local variables, indexes, and locals. Doesn't work with methods, constructors, return types, and fields and other stuff there. Uh, okay, we have a new garbage collector there uh, in the last version of Java. And now they are uh, introducing a new, better, clean interface for the garbage collector, which makes all those things uh, better working together, also in the JAP 304. Uh, we also have, we will also have parallel full uh, garbage collector for, uh, the, the name is garbage first there. Uh, one of our talks today from Fedora uh, will be about, uh, well, uh, garbage first uh, collector in general. But to keep the story short, we need parallelism. It was single threaded before most of the things. So now they are competing between many different garbage collectors. This one will probably be the best when, when they uh, have it in Java, 9, Java 10, sorry, like this one. Uh, also, there is uh, a talk about handshakes, uh, there is talk about alternative memory devices for heap, there is additional Unicode support, uh, there is experimental uh, JIT compiler Graal, there are some new root certificates, there is many, many other things that we can call under one line housekeeping, you know, like keeping things clean, and there are some deprecated uh, stuff that will be thrown out, uh, out of Java, well, out of any new version of Java out there because they are trying to clean uh, uh, after themselves. Uh, okay, but there's a new thing about it. 
uh, there is every six months we have a new version of Java and we'll have a new number. So actually this is Java 10. Uh, next September, well, September this year, we'll have Java 11. So we'll have like a lot of new Javas. Uh, there will be still subversions there like uh, updates and stuff there, so 10, 0, 1, or whatever. But actually, we'll have like twice a year the new version of Java. Uh, Long-term roadmap, well, there are many new projects for which I don't have time to explain uh, properly over here, like Ember, uh, which is the incubator for some uh, productivity-oriented features. There is Panama for interconnect JVM native. Uh, there is Valhalla that is also trying to do some other new language features there, like value types and generic specializations. There is Lu Loom, which tries to reduce the complexity in writing concurrent stuff there, and many, many new things. But this is, will be done in Java 11, 12, or somewhere out there in the following year. Uh, let's go back to Croatia. So, a few nice things that happened to us in 2017. Uh, first, we got a new meetup in Zagreb, Java Zagreb meetup. Any of the guys here from... Okay, they'll, they'll come a bit later to the lightning talk, uh, and they'll explain what they are doing, but they are organizing meetups, the, the stuff that we are not able to do anymore because we, we became too large. Uh, we also had one nice Eclipse demo camp at FAIR uh, in November, uh, thanks to the professor Mario Kusik. And there were also, there was an initiative, Alex was there with me, uh, to introduce Java into high schools already by some using some other stuff, of course, not Eclipse and NetBeans and, and uh, IntelliJ, but some a bit a little lower level there. Together with Oracle Academy, we also have a talk about from Oracle Academy today. Uh, and once other stuff that happened, well, we started it last year with uh, Nenad Bakic, but this year we have the new stuff there. Uh, micro bits are actually going to public libraries so that you can borrow them anytime you need them. And there is a new Indiegogo campaign about it. I think they already reached the goal, I didn't check today. But you can invest from something as small as $6 up to, uh, uh, well, a few thousand. Uh, if you want to support that all stuff, because I think really we are now uh, vi witnessing the STEM revolution in education in Croatia, just because someone finally took the initiative and actually tried to do something, uh, well, with our children, who maybe don't, they will, they will become developers. So this is also a call for action. Um, what else? Uh, we are supporting a lot of conferences, including, oh, well, you see it over here, Qued, Krog, Shift, Infobib, Change, Doors, Clock, DroidCon, and others. Uh, and we try to help each other as much as possible. And once again, thank, I always have to say thank you to all our company members who are supporting this whole story. And without them, we, we, we would not be able to organize uh, this whole stuff because it actually takes a lot of, well, not only time, but unfortunately, money too. Uh, so thank you. To, for that you're still with us, uh, still being a member there. Uh, we also have a lot of partners and friends there, including Crowd, Karnak, Hire, Open Hook, uh, Java Zagreb, Agile Croatia, Open Blend, uh, a lot of jugs from neighboring countries, and some uh, sponsors like Mreja and RIT and Netocracia and others. So actually, uh, there is a lot of stuff going on in the background that where we try to help each other, and the whole community is relatively you know, vivid in trying to, to help each other, well, in the end. Uh, I will conclude with call to Java Crow. There will be a lightning talk about it. So over here, just for a note, May 7 to 8, you already noted somewhere in the calendar there. Once again, we have the whole island to ourselves together with the castle for partying until, well, I wouldn't say late in the night. I can say early in the morning. Uh, and call for speakers is open till March the 10th, but we'll talk about it a bit later. Uh, this is one of the years there. This is the island, so yeah, there is the island. Uh, and we are looking forward to this story in May. Okay, that's enough from me. Uh, you heard everything I could do in, in a relatively short time. We'll switch now to, to uh, Nicholas. And if you have any questions, I'm, well, I'm here the whole day. So just find me in the hall and we'll talk about it. Thank you.